huh? Well, that was just really, we got to try that again. He is worthy, huh? Isn't he worthy? Man, I don't know anyone more worthy of our praise um, than, than him. And if you don't know that, man, I just pray that you find that out today. It's just, uh, he's, he's actually worth living for. Some people have found out he's worth dying for. <laughs> They're called Christians. Um, believers. You've heard of them, right? <laughs> Hi. Glad you guys are here. How was your week? Everyone had a good week? Restful? How, were, how was your fast? I did find out something this week. I'm really glad that when you're in a fast, that there is such a thing as fast food. Um, for all the punks in here, <laughs> I um, man, I'm really excited about this year for what he's doing. Barry, I know you're laughing because you're you're, you're one of those guys who found fast food to be very pleasing as well at Wendy's, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, sorry, that was, just, that was not a hiccup. Just so you know, that was actually a, a laugh. And Alden, during the announcements, I, I'm just wondering, did, how excited did you get? And how excited, I just, I don't remember what exact. I thought I heard something, but I wasn't sure how excited you actually were. Oh, that's, all, that's where it ended? Oh, so you were jumping up and down. Father, forgive her for her lying spirit, God. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Um, How many believe that benefits are important when serving the Lord? I've had some people say to me, you know, Pastor Scott, it just doesn't seem like I'm I'm engaged in and I, that I get all the benefits. And I was, you know, have you ever wondered why, you know, some people get benefits and some people don't get benefits? And I was, I was up at Walmart getting the food for that, you know, we, we, that they've blessed us with to, to bring here to help people and single moms and just, you know, whatever, just anyone, you know, just that needs to be blessed with food. And I do that a couple times a week. And I just, um, on Saturday, the Saturday I think it was, uh, Rick was with me and Paul was with me, and uh, no, Paul wasn't with me. Who was with me? Jim. Rick and Jim were with me, and um, a guy, a couple, a guy and a lady there were just very. You could you could tell they were their soul was hurting, you know. And so I was man like, what's up? You know how how you how you doing? What's going on? Talk talk to me. And he's just like, he said, it just feels like we're not wanted anymore. And um, and the beautiful thing about Wherever you go, there's someone that you carry with you that actually does want everyone. <laughs> In fact, he's the answer to everything that I've ever found a problem for. <laughs> so, so I said, hey, you, you, do you mind if I pray for you? And so we begin to just pray uh, in, the, in the back hallways of Walmart. And I, and I, and I, and I, I want to tell you, um, his presence is not reserved for the sanctuary. But, dear God, let his presence be in the sanctuary. You know, it's like, it's like, how many churches today will not even know that he was there? In fact, they'll be able to do church today without the Holy Spirit's presence even being there. Because they've learned how to, you know, we're all, we all can do that, you know. We can do life. We can do church. You know, we can do family. We can raise children without the presence of God. But why would you want to, once you've had him, why would you want anything but him to influence whatever you're doing in life. So I, I, you know, I go to Walmart and I pick up food, but I'm always looking for something that God wants to do above and beyond the provision that he's given us. And it's to give back and to pour into some other people's lives. And so we begin to minister to this guy, and you can literally see, I don't know, Rick's in here, but we can literally see his countenance change on him. And we saw the weight coming off of him just that moment. And he was like, and it's like, I'm, I'm amazed at how receptive people are to prayer, but I'm also amazed at how, much they're not prayed for. Like, he literally was blown away that somebody would take the time to stop and to meet his need when he was the one giving to us. 
it's, it, it really, really reveals the heart, and this is a really big deal to God, that, that, that we as a church actually begin to impact our community everywhere we go because we carry something that is heavenly that the world knows nothing about. And it's just that kindness and that love and that gentleness of God. It's that, it's that ability to be self-control in self-control when the whole world is needing to be controlled by something or some regulation or something. It's like, wow, how nice it is to actually be so free in, your, in the fruits of the Spirit that people look at you and they say, how is that happening? And you're able to say to them, because of the God that I serve who's amazing, and you get a chance to introduce them. And, you, and that can happen any day of your life. So I just want to encourage you that that, that, that a thankful lifestyle, a, a blessing the Lord lifestyle, will always open doors for you to be able to speak into other people's lives to be a blessing. Okay? Just a thought. Just a thought. It says here, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all their benefits. The first one was, who forgives all our iniquities. How many just love the fact that he did that for us? You know, how many believe he did that for us? Right? Okay. And then he says, who, the, the next one is, is the, and this is kind of a, kind of a weird one for us, because some of us may be struggling with this one, but who heals all of our diseases? How many did he say he heals? He heals all of our diseases. And I, and I looked up, you know, what he's speaking about in this word, you know, with diseases, and it's, uh, it's malady, it's, it's physical maladies, and it's like, it's some, some people think, well, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual healing thing. So it's not. He's, not. he's not talking about that here. He, the spiritual part was where he dealt with our iniquities, okay, the heart issues and stuff like that, but, but well, I guess it still is a spiritual part, but it's not a, sometimes we say, well, I just need spiritual healing. Well, that's good. You may need spiritual healing, and some people say, well, I need emotional healing, or I need this other type but what he's talking about here is he's talking about physical healing. And so, and, and so I'm going to stop there because I, I was going to try to get into the next part of it, which is who redeems your life from destruction, how many are glad he does that, and, and who crowns you with loving kindness, how many are glad that he, oh, I looked up that word crown. You know what that word crown means? To encompass you, to in, just wrap himself completely around what, how many would like to walk through your day completely encompassed by his loving kindness. I, we, we had the, 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 the time of fasting this week, and, uh, and how many know that when people are being kind to you, that life is just a little better? Okay, so I, I had this thought that maybe God is really, he really likes you. Maybe God actually really loves you, and maybe God actually wants to be kind to you. The problem is, is that so many people have experienced what God isn't and called it God, that they have made what is not God into God. Pastor Scott, you know, why did, why did New Orleans suffer the way that New Orleans suffered? Why did God allow that to happen? Well, if you know, if you actually know the God that I know, then you would know that God would never ever want to hurt any of his children. That's not in his heart. But the enemy has come, if you read the word, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. So if something gets stolen, killed, or destroyed, you can pretty much know that that's the enemy, that's not God. Now, well, Pastor Scott, couldn't God stop it? Yes, God could stop it. But here's the amazing thing, is that God has put something in motion that he won't interfere with. And though he could stop it in his power, in his sovereignty, he knows that if he stops it, it'll actually be counterproductive to the end good. I don't know why he uses trials and tribulations to produce character in us. I would have sooner had lollipops. <laughs> if you eat lollipops, you'll get character. Great, I'll take a dozen of them. <laughs> but trials and tribulations is what he uses to create something in us. And, and so, and so I, you know, I, I, I don't think that God is ever afraid of, of questions. I, I, think that, I think that he is, I think he weighs them, if you would. How do you, what is the heart behind the question that you're asking? If you're asking a question to learn more about him, he loves those questions. But I will tell you that usually he will not answer a question that comes from a heart of challenge to him. Is like, why would you do that? But if you say, Father, why did this happen? You can expect a response from heaven. See, posture and heart 
is he's always looking about heart issues. He's always trying to, trying to refine things in our spirit and in our heart that, that need to be refined because there's things there that we don't even know that are there, and he'll use situations on the outside to, to address things that are on the inside, and the reason he uses things on the outside to address things on the inside is because we're not aware those things are on the inside until the pressures of the outside come and reveal what's on the inside. You never know the fruit of something or the juice of something or whatever, the, the, the texture of something until you squeeze it. See, that was, a, that was a holy moment right there. You have that all day long. Charge. <laughs> so today I, wanna, I want us to, to look at this thing of healing, and I want us to ask a question. Why don't more people get healed? I think that's a good question to ask. And I, think, I don't think God's afraid of that question, but I... When I asked that question for me this week, and I'm going to share with you a few things that I believe that it is, okay? But they're not, it's not all the reasons, okay? I want to just tell you, well, Pastor Scott said there's three reasons why people don't get healed. No, there, there, there can be more than that, but I'm going to share with you some that you can, you can see in Scripture. But I, I wanted to, I, I said all that stuff about Walmart to tell you this, and I always take these little rabbit trails. I don't know why, because I'm 51. It's just what 51-year-olds do. We go hunting. Um, when I was at Walmart, I was asking about that whole deal because this man was complaining about the fact that, you know, another year, and he'll actually be, I don't know the word they call it, um, but he'll start to get benefits. And he said in another year, now he's been there seven years, he goes, I'll start to get a week's vacation or something or, you know, that type of deal. I don't, I don't know that, you know, whatever, I don't know their whole, their whole plan. I just, I just know that what he was telling me. But I was thinking about this when people ask me, well, Pastor Scott, I, it seems like some people get these benefits that Psalms 103 is talking about, but there's a lot of people that don't. And, and in fact, I haven't gotten, I haven't seen or felt a lot of those benefits. And I'll just say this, and this, isn't, this is not to jam anybody up. This is not to throw anything more on you, but I, I want to I tell you something. This is, I'll just say the phrase. Part-time employees don't get full-time benefits. What does that look like? I just want to say this. There are people that give themselves daily. To see, Because this thing is not about earning. You, this isn't about earning. It's not, it's not about, but it is about taking. Hmm, okay. Every one of you have been given a measure of faith, the measure of faith. Everybody agree with that? The Bible says everybody's been given the measure of faith. There are people that will use that measure of faith, and because they use it appropriately, they'll gain more. Okay. There are people that have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And those that have tasted of him and that taste created a hunger, they'll get more. A person that has pressed into God and seen a breakthrough, right? They have a, they have a, they have a in whatever it is, maybe they pressed into God and they had a breakthrough and an answer to prayer. Or they pressed into God and they've seen a breakthrough in their marriage. Or they pressed into God and they've seen a breakthrough with their children. Now that breakthrough can stop there or that breakthrough can create more of a pressing because your experiences, your experiences in God pro propel you into something of a desire for more of God. And I don't know anything in the kingdom. He, everything he does in the kingdom is to create a heart uh, a hunger and a desire to want more of him. You, you, although you are always satisfied and content in him, that contentment says, I want more of that same contentment. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll use this week as an example, but while fasting, I, I didn't know how, I, Mark, I just got to be honest, bro. I didn't know how I was going to get through that first day. I was thinking about McClure's meats all day. I'm going to I'm thinking, I'm like, Lisa and I are talking, let's, let's buy some extra cookbooks, you know? Let's start, we started talking about Bill Johnson. They were saying about 40 days, they, they were like, they, man, they, he bought like, I don't know, what did he buy, 100 different cookbooks or something? It was like crazy during that time. Because there's a, what, there's a hunger, right? See, here it is, in the natural, not, when you're not eating or when there's a lack of eating, you get hungry. But in the spiritual, the more that you eat, the hunger you get. It's like, I, didn't, I got done, we got done with the fast. We went to, and I was thinking, man, I'm gonna, we're thinking going to Friendly's. That cheeseburger is gonna be dripping, and it is gonna be so good. Those french fries better be lightly browned and lightly salted. And, oh, Jesus loves me type of moment, you know? 
And I went there and ate the burger, started to eat the burger, and I was just kind of like, what a letdown, man. I mean, it wasn't that I wasn't hungry for food, because I was hungry for food. But it was the fact of, by, 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 by having time with him where he was, where, there, where food wasn't even more important than he was, where my time wasn't more important than, than, than he was, where it was like TV wasn't more important. There's something that happens. Your heart gets tenderized. Your spirit gets brightened. Your perspective, it changes. You literally, you, you literally detox in every way. You get the poisons out of your system. And, and it was so, it was just terrible that I literally felt like, I, I, w- I don't want to say this wrong. I literally felt like eating was counterproductive. And you look at me, I'll tell you right now, I don't think eating is counterproductive. But in comparison to his glory, and in comparison of adoring him, I wouldn't exchange it for the world. In, in fact, it's done something to me, I won't share with you what, what I'm, what I'm committing to him to do, um, but I am, I've, 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 in, I've increased my, my commitment in that area of prayer and fasting um, just for that place of intimacy with him because of what it produced. So I want to tell you, this, the, the good news of what I'm sharing with you is we've all started somewhere, but we've all got some place to go. And how we get there, he initiates it, and our response to his initiation is what gets us to the next place. And then that next encounter that we have with him, our response to that encounter gets us to the next place. The Bible says we go from glory to glory to glory to glory, from faith to faith to faith to faith. And I want to tell you that you may lack faith to heal somebody today, maybe in a wheelchair. But maybe you actually could have faith to pray for somebody that has a headache. And see, whatever that beginning point is, and I want to encourage you, allow your faith to increase because of this. This is the reason you need your faith to increase because of this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We walk by faith, not by sight. All right? So, so there's some, if, if, if you have it in your heart to want to please God, then this thing about faith is a really, really big deal. So let's talk about three reasons. It, you know, these are three reasons that, I, that I've unpacked with regards to why we don't see healing in this culture like we do in other places in the world. The first one is this. It really makes a difference what you believe. It really makes a difference what you believe. If you don't believe that God heals, then you're not going to get a healing. If you don't believe God is the healer, then you're not going to think that he wants to heal you. So how do we know that God is our healer? Well, in Isaiah and some other different passages in the scripture, um, we know that that God had different names. What were some of those names? Jehovah Jireh, God is my provider. Another one that I want to share with you today is Jehovah Rapha, and it means God is my healer. So I have a question to ask. This is a theological question. There's a debate out there that healing ended with the apostles. there's There's a debate that's out there that says healing ended with the apostles. Well, okay, well, apostles haven't ended, so I don't get that whole deal. But and if you don't believe that, read Revelation. It says watch out for false prophets, false teachers, false apostles. Well, if there's false apostles, prophets, and teachers, then there must be some real ones. Just think about that for a minute. But, that, but, but now healing, they say, so I've just gotta, I got a question for you. Has God stopped being a provider? Has God stopped being a savior? Has God stopped being a redeemer? Has God stopped being a friend? Has he stopped being a father? How, th- then why would he stop being a healer? He named himself Rapha. I am the healer. And it means, with regards to that, 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 that situation they're talking about in uh, Psalms, it actually is talking about physical maladies. So why aren't we getting it? Well, I think we actually have to, when you read something, <laughs> why do you guys go to a doctor? I know we've asked that question ourselves sometimes. <laughs> why do we go, when I go to a dentist, I go, I know I didn't want to go to the dentist today. Um, but why do we go? Because... We believe, we believe that they're going to actually provide something for us, right? Why, why, or you wouldn't go, right? I read in uh, Psychology Today this morning, about 10 minutes before the first service, because I was wondering, what's the world think about this stuff, about faith? So I just Googled some things, and guess what came up? In Psychology Today, it says this, faith healing shouldn't work, but it does. Psychology Today, 2000 number issue. The title, Faith Healing Shouldn't Work, But It Does. 
And so they begin to unpack that, and they said that they said outside of surgical remedies that they do, when they when they looked at actually people giving being given medication, more than fifty percent of the medications given were placebos. And people's faith, and and and, and most of the healing came from those placebos. More than fifty percent of the people got healed because they believed that that pill was going to heal them. So they equate it to faith. So my question is, if faith in a sugar pill can heal you, what's the chances that faith in God could heal you? So the issue is really, the real, the real issue here is, is not the substance, it's, it's the faith. How many times did Jesus say it's your faith that has healed you? Or it's the faith of others that have healed you? I've never seen such great faith as what you've had. God is, this is a big deal, This because it's impossible to please God without faith, because faith equals, you might want to write this down, trust. You don't have faith in God because you really don't trust God. And the reason you don't trust God is is because you've had experiences that the pill fixes you and you haven't had experiences that God fixes you. See, in the worlds where they don't have pills and they only have God, their faith is great because God is all they got. They don't have the options that we have. I prom- let me give you... I'm, and I'm busting through because I got to go pretty fast today. There's a there's there's a woman, or there was a man, Jairus, 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 Jairus. Anyways, one of those guys had a really cool name, and I'd probably never name my kids that, but he had a cool name. And he had a daughter, he had a daughter, and his daughter was 12 years old. And his daughter was told he was told that his daughter was going to die. In fact, she was so sick he knew that she was going to die. Those were the facts. Okay, let me ask you something. How many of you, how many of you all of a sudden, like this man, would all of a sudden believe in healing when everyone else is telling you that there's no hope? If my 12-year-old is dying, I'm gonna pursue people who believe in God. I'm gonna pursue people, I'm gonna pursue elders who believe in healing. I'm gonna pursue people who are people of faith. I don't wanna go to a person who has a theology that God doesn't do this anymore. Am I, am I just, I'm just being real. You know, when it comes down to it, that's what I'm looking for because there's something inside of all of us that know that God is actually as amazing as he is. There's something inside of each one of you that knows that you, your, your mind can't wrap, your, your mind can't really wrap, wrap understanding around it because our minds are, are finite, but our heart is able to understand more things of God than our mind is able to. That's why our mind has to be transformed. Our heart is renewed by him coming, but our mind has to be transformed into thinking that aligns with what he has done in our heart. So you gotta start, see, faith allows you to believe in your heart, but your mind won't allow you to believe by reason. God, I don't understand, but it doesn't matter whether I understand. I trust you. There's something in my heart that says I trust you. I trust you completely. I don't know why, because here's the truth. My daughter's dying. But if you can just speak a word, if you can just touch her, if you can just reach out to her, I know that she'll be well. Now at the same time in this passage, in Mark, Matthew, where am I? I don't know, Mark, I think. In this same passage, there's a woman with the issue of blood. It's funny that the number 12 comes up both times. But here's a girl who's 12 years old and God's gonna do a work, Jesus is gonna do a work. And here's a woman with the issue of blood. Now here, the woman with the issue of blood, man, for 12 years, she'd been pursuing every possible answer. You know what's amazing to me? I love the fact that when people, how should I say this? When people really want something, they don't give up. I have seen people in desperate situations give up on God in an hour because he didn't show up in that hour that they wanted him to show up in. I just want to tell you that there's something in this woman with the issue of blood that you need to see that gets God's attention. Watch this. The woman has dealt with things for 12 years. She's She's gone everywhere. She's taken everybody's advice. Anybody ever been in that place? Well, this person told me to do this. This person told me that. And, they, and you go look and you try, every, you try everything. And God, it's just not working. It's not working. I've tried everything and nothing's changing. And all of a sudden, she hears about this Jesus. And she goes, I, I gotta try one more time. 
I gotta take that one more step. I gotta reach out one more time. And what she does is there's, there's hundreds or thousands of people around Jesus and they're all pressing in on him. Everybody know the story? They're all pressing in on Jesus as he's walking down the road and all of a sudden, this woman who's desperate for him moves through the crowd, pushes through the crowd. She's sick. She's, listen, I don't know, an issue of blood. She's gotta be weak. Yeah. You know, right? I mean, she's, she's I mean, you know, it's noticeable. I mean, and she gets past, oh, Jesus. She gets past her excuses. Yeah. Oh, man, excuses will always keep you from an encounter. Every single time, an excuse, a reason, and you know what? Here's the deal. She had a good reason not to press through. She was sick. But she wanted something more than the sickness. She wanted him. And she pressed and she pressed. And here's the amazing thing. She got through and she reached up and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, not even touch him, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, something's gonna happen to me. And here's the beautiful thing. We can't even do it. It's like, man, these people are just pressing in on Jesus all around him, right? And then this woman comes up. Don't, don't be scared, man. That's all right. That's all right. Don't be scared. It's all right. She, she beat you up or something, dude, or what? So, 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 so here, here comes this woman pressing in through the crowd, and she reaches up, and she touches the hem of his garment. And what does Jesus do? Who touched me? Can I tell you something? There's something about a person who'll be persistent that God's aware of. And you can be in a crowd of people. You all, everybody, everybody can be at this altar, but if you're pressing in, you're gonna get the awareness of God. Yeah, yeah, see, here, here's the other deal, man, with the church. Everybody's waiting for God to touch them. God's waiting for you to touch him. Let me give you another instance. This, this person was sick. And, and in the passage it says, if you will call for the elders of the church to come and lay hands on you and anoint you with oil, you will be, well, you'll be healed. Can, do, do you know what, what, what part of it was the magical part of that whole deal that I just said? What was, the, what was the most important part? She called. She initiated it. It wasn't, see, in church, this is what we do. Please come. We're going to do it at the end of the service today. Please come. If you want to heal your body, please come here, and the elders are going to pray for you. Can I just tell you something? <laughs> if you don't want healing, if you don't want to, if, if it, you're not going to get it. If your kids, if your kids being sick, if there's not enough in you to get on your face and to get on your knees and to press into God and to pursue him and to be persistent until you see something of a breakthrough and a manifestation of healing on that person, then you, you're not, I'm just gonna tell you there's something. Listen, God's not gonna work harder for you than you're willing to work. It's called a partnership. We co-labor with God. That's what the word says. But there's too many people that are just waiting. Well, if God wants to do it, then I'm just gonna let him do it. Yeah, you ain't getting nothing done. Just telling you. Okay, except for the sovereignty of God, I get that. He can do whatever he wants, and he, he wants to knock you on your butt like he did Saul and Paul. But I just want to ask you something. Do you really want to wait for God to initiate a knocking on your butt when he's invited you into something of intimacy with him? Because most people that I know that got knocked on their butt, they paid an amazing price the rest of their lives. They're called apostles. <laughs> yeah, for all you who are really interested in titles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be careful what you wish for. So in our connect groups, I'm just gonna throw out some passages to you that uh, makes a difference on um, what you believe. Isaiah 30, you guys have in your notes already? Is there, you have in your bulletin or anything? No, no, okay. Isaiah 33, 24, good passage. Isaiah 53, five and six, actually four, five and six is good. First Peter 2, 24. When you get time, go after those. Second point is this, and ask questions in your connect groups. Second point is this, it makes a difference. If you're not in a connect group, check the guest information service center and get, get plugged into one. There'll be brand new ones launching in March, so it'll be a good time to get plugged into know people and get into the word, ask questions, get your questions answered, love on each other, love God, worship, sense his presence, you know, those basic things. Um, <laughs> point number two is this, it makes a real difference where you place your trust. First one is, what do you believe in? 
makes a difference what you believe in. Second one is where do you put your trust? See, there are a lot of people, um, there are a lot of people that have placed their trust in their faith rather than in God. And if having faith in your faith is not enough, even if you're married to her, just saying. But having faith in God will produce something. Trusting God. See, some people trust their faith. Well, I have great faith. I just have great faith. I have great faith. That, that's not going to produce anything. Then there's the other thing is having faith in healing. No, nah, that's not going to do it either. Well, I, I, I believe. I, I have faith in healing. I have faith in this healing. Or having faith in that person who's going to touch me. That's not going to do it either. Those are all replacements or substitutions for the real thing. Our faith and our trust has to be in God. Let me give you a, um, I said this this morning, and I forgot their names again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't know why I forget their names. I guess because they're so common. They made this statement. They went into the fiery furnace, and they said, we know that our God will deliver us. Watch this. Stay with me. We know that our God will deliver us. Well, how did they know that? Because they knew their God. They, they knew their God was a deliverer, right? But here's what they said. But if he doesn't, can I just tell you something? We cannot live in such a way, we cannot live in such a way that what we do is based upon the fact of whether he does it or whether he doesn't. We can't live with God in an if-then statement. God, if you do this, then I'll do this. It doesn't work that way. What we say is, God, I know who you are. I know you're a good God. I know that you love me, and I know all things are working out for, for the good. I want to be a part of your plan, and I want to be in your box. I'm not trying to put you into mine. So do with me whatever you will for the greater good. I'm your servant. I'll lay down my life, or I'll have it. I'll raise up, or I'll fall down. I'll die, or I'll live, but it's all up to you. And I, why? Because I trust you with my eternity. And if you do then all of a sudden the fire doesn't bother you anymore because you know who your God is, and whether you go by fire or whether you get delivered around the fire, you know that he's going to deliver you into your purpose, destiny, because that's who he is and why. I trust him with it. Isn't that a good way to live? What are you going to do? Paul, Paul would go through life and he'd say, what are you going to do, kill me? Kill me. What are you gonna? See, when you're already dead, you don't worry about what people are going to do to you. Heidi Baker put it this way. She goes, I'm, 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 a, I'm a dead woman walking. People are saying, well, you, could, you could get killed. I'm already dead. When you live that, why? In such a way that you trust God with everything, for everything. Isn't, don't you think that would be a little bit, I want to see my people, I want to see you guys free. See, the concerns of this world and the distractions of this world consume us. When we were going through this fast and stuff, I, what, what I found was amazing I wasn't worried about anything during the fast. I wasn't stressed about anything during the fast. I wasn't even sinning during the fast. Do you know how hard it is when you're fasting and praying and worshiping God to sin? I tried. Couldn't do it. When you're in his presence, there's something that overwhelms you and captivates you and just, you, you just, wait, wait, there's not, does, I mean, does, I let, I'm, please understand the context, but I'm like, does sin even exist when, you're in my, when I'm in your presence? I gotta ask that question. How, can, sin, can darkness be where light is? I'm just saying, man, there's just, a, you, if you're having a struggle with, 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 with temptations and that kind of stuff, get in his presence yeah. and stay there. Yeah. You actually can stay, see, <laughs> Jesus had a fasting and prayer lifestyle because he knew what fasting and prayer actually bought for him in life. If we have that, you understand, we can walk in this where all of a sudden the things that used to distract us, they're not going to have the power over us because we've, we've yielded, we've come into agreement with the one who is, has all power and all authority. Is that making sense? Is that help? Is that helping anybody? Have you ever had a, have you ever had a thought that hurt you? Have you ever had a thought that made you depressed? Have you ever had a thought that brought you anxiety or worry? Well, what if, you actually, what if we could actually train and find, and find ourselves being in a place in the spirit where actually we could have a different thought? So when a depressing thought comes in, we're able to actually move to one, a thought that takes us to a place of joy. What would that do to us? What would it do to the people around us? What would it do to the environment that we're living in? 
So I think it's really important. I'm going to give you a couple passages of Scripture. 2 Chronicles 16, 12 to 13. Mark 10, 52. And Acts 14, 8 through 9. And then in James chapter 5, great, great prayer of faith. Point number three. And we're going to have some altar time here for you guys just to love on you and stuff. Um, Point number three is this. There's a difference. You have to understand this. The reason some people don't get healed is there's a difference between fact and truth. Now, as a believer, you don't have to throw out the facts to walk in the truth. You allow the truth to overwhelm the facts. The facts, the facts were this. The facts were that this, this woman, this girl, this 12-year-old girl, was dead. That's the facts. The truth was she was sleeping. The problem is, is too many people can't see the truth in the supernatural or with their spiritual eyes because they're so distracted by the facts of the natural eyes. And, and what the Lord wants to do is he wants to so reveal the truth that we're allowed to walk in the truth to actually overcome the facts. Did, are you with me? The truth, see, see how, was it, how was it that Jesus could actually see something that the rest of the people weren't seeing? It was because he walked in the truth. Well, what was the truth? He knew what his father's heart and will was for situations. And he walked at it in purity. He walked at it in absoluteness. Now, could he have gotten there and healed that girl before she died? Yes. But sometimes God wants to do a greater miracle than the miracle we're looking for. But what happens is, because people don't get the miracle they're looking for, they never receive the greater miracle that God actually wanted to appropriate to them. And what does that take? It takes faith. It takes trust. What we do is, we run at the first, so this is, this is a major problem, is that we become so in agreement with the facts that we lose complete agreement with the truth. And so, because the facts overwhelm us, truth has no place in us. So, what do we have to do? And, I, and, I, and I'm going to close with this. But, but, but what we have to do is, we have to, when you're getting ready to go into battle, when is it that you repair your shield? When you're in battle or before you go? When do you sharpen your sword? Before battle or when you're in battle? You do it beforehand. See, being prepared. Jesus spent a lot of time preparing in the truth. Jesus spent a lot of time with his father. In fact, he would spend every day with his father before he ever spent time with people. Why? Because he wanted to walk and do his father's will. And as a believer, as a Christian, to be Christ-like, what Jesus modeled for us was that same thing. Father, today, what is your portion? What do you want me to do today um, that is your will to bring heaven to earth in, in any given situation and help me to have my, I want, I want to make sure that before I go out into battle of the day that my sword is sharpened, that my shield is fixed. If there's any holes in my shield, I want to increase that shield of faith somehow. I want to, what do I need to do? And, and so how do we know? Well, the word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm going to spend, and, here, and here's a little, just a little thing. In the morning, spend time in the word until you hear God. Hear his voice. He'll speak something specific to you, prepare something in you that is coming in the day. He will sharpen your sword. He will, he will, he will make your, your, your shield strong. He'll get that, that helmet of salvation. Remind yourself that you are secure in the Lord. Get that armor on in the morning so that when you go out, you're prepared to do battle because you're not gonna be, here's the deal, and here's the beauty about it. When you're prepared for battle, you don't have to be defensive. You can be offensive when you're prepared. And Jesus modeled that. He never, ever, ever, he would, listen, when he got tired and wearied by people, by life, by situations, he would draw away and spend time with his father. He modeled it beautifully, beautifully for us. And don't think if Jesus needed it that you don't. And I will tell you, most people fall in battle because they're not prepared for the battle that he, that, that's coming. And I promise you, God knows exactly the battles of your day, your week, your year ahead of time that he will prepare you if you actually spend time with him and, you know, and here's the deal. People say, well, Pastor Scott, I just don't you know. I'm not hearing his voice. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, be intentional and persistent, and you will hear his voice. It's absolutely, absolutely normal for the Christian 
to hear the shepherd's voice. You read that passage, and I'm gonna and look for it. You gotta look for it. You gotta dig for it. You gotta see. See, gold isn't gold isn't found by those who aren't willing to dig. You just you, you can't just skim over something. Look at that word and go, wow, what does that word mean? What does that phrase mean? And then read the verses before it and after it, and then read the chapter before it and the chapter after it, and then maybe actually read the whole book sometime and go, wow, God, that's what you're doing here. But see, if we make if we make our time with God. And, and, I'll, and I'll use the word loosely, devotionals, or if I could, a religious act, then all you're going to do is get a, you're, you're going to go through the motions and not have anything of an encounter or a revelation or an insight of the Lord that you could have if you just sat there and meditated on one phrase. Lord, speak to me out of that phrase today. Is this helping? I hope this, I hope this. And so then you, then you get a faith that wells up in you because he knows what's coming in your day and he'll prepare you with something that you can actually give to somebody. Wouldn't it be beautiful if everyone in this church, everyone in this church, heard something from the Lord every day and, and, and actually that you, you were ready to share it with somebody else in the course of your day? Man, I just, I mean, it, that's at Walmart, that's at the dentist office, that's in your family. I mean, God's given me words for my kids, and I didn't know they were for my kids when he gave me the word, but then a situation came out, and I go, ah, that's what it was for. And it's all in the preparation beforehand for what's coming in the day ahead of you. Too many people, too many warriors, too many soldiers, too many generals fall for lack of preparation. And he's preparing his church right now for one of the most amazing outbreaks and revivals that the world has ever seen. But he's looking for those who will be persistent in faith and say, God, I'm not settling for anything. I'm not stopping until I see your kingdom come. I see your will be done. I'm not stopping until I see that healing manifested. I'm not stopping until that marriage is fixed. I'm not stopping until that brother comes to the Lord. I'm not stopping. I'm going to stay in persistent. I'm, I'm going to just share something with you right now. There was, an, there was an individual that was on my heart this week during prayer, and, and, and literally this person is, I don't know if this person's ever been on my heart. I'm just being honest. But the Lord awakened something in the middle of the night of me and said, pray, and pray for some specific things. Pray, pray that there's a softening of 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 the spirit, softening of the heart, a softening of the, and, a, and just very specific things. And I want to tell you that it's beautiful how God allows some little things to happen, but this morning that got manifested. And it was just like, and I, I want to tell you, if, if you, like I said, if you're struggling with the fact of this whole deal of, 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 you know, maybe your faith right now is only in that little pill, well, let's move it a little bit further. Say, God, you know what? Um, I, I got a pain in my hand. I'm going to believe you for that little pain in my hand. I'm going to believe that Actually, you're a good God that you actually want to touch that thing. Uh, maybe, man, I got this relationship that's not quite right. It needs some healing, God. I, I'm going to believe you to begin to heal that relationship right now and pray into that. And here's the deal. Pray into it until you see the manifestation of it. Don't pray once and say, there, I did my duty. Because anything that you do out of duty will never produce anything that is actually life-giving or eternal. That's one of those burn-up things, hay, wood, and stubble that gets burned up in the fire. I had lots more to say, but we're done. We're done. Um, ben, will you uh, come up? Barry, will you come up? We're going to take, we're just going to open these altars up because here's the deal. I, I know right now I could call a number of different things by things the Lord is saying to me. I know there's relationships that need to be healed here today. I know that there are relationships between husbands and wives. I know there's relationships between parents and children. Um, so those things need healed. I know there's people struggling with the flu and the cold symptoms. I know that there are, there are, there's, there's, there's uh, financial issues that need to be healed. I, I know that there are soulish issues that need to be healed, thoughts that need to be healed. All those things are there, but what I want to, I don't feel compelled to compel you, but I'd like to open it up for you. Don't walk out of here, don't walk out of here without getting what you came for. If all you came for was a good talk, well, you might have gotten that, but that's way short of what he wants to do for you today. If you didn't hear him or feel him or sense him or, or, or have something deposited into you that was life-giving, you know, no, nah, no, nah, that's a good word. Don't go or stay, if you would, till you get it. Pastor Scott, what about that burger I'm going to have? That's what I'm saying. Don't let a burger keep you from something that's way more amazing than a burger. Stand with me. Father, I pray in Jesus' name right now. In this moment, as Barry comes and as the leadership comes and as 
GTU students come and the staff come. We're here just to love on people today. Would you have your way, God? Would you do in this house what you want to do right now at this time? When we get done, Barry will close you guys out. And we'll uh, have a word of prayer to close you all out. But let's have this time. While people are coming, let's just stay in an atmosphere of worship. Let's give it, I closed early, so let's give it like, you know, five, ten minutes of just stay in an attitude of prayer and worship. And let's see what God can do with respect to being Rafa, God. In Jesus' name, Ben. chapter 16 verse 20 it says and they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following and I just everything that we do I just want to remind you it's just working towards the place of whatever that the word goes forth on and plants seeds on it means that it, it's there the anointing or the presence of the Lord in the word of God is present to touch that area so that's why often when we finish a service, you know, in ministers' points of view in the church, we look at the altar as our finish and not the end of the message because we know that the purpose of it, of preaching the word on, ministering the word on a subject is so that the seeds of that word get in the side of the hearts of the people so that then we can respond to. And when we read the word Rapha, and he's talking about healing. This deals with everything. It's fascinating. I was looking at it in the Hebrew while he was talking. And it deals with everything from healing sicknesses and diseases to healing um, mental struggles that have been going on all the way to the very word Rafa means to, to heal national hurts or wounds, which I think is phenomenal. So I'm just saying there's even a place for it in the presence of the Lord at this moment that we want to encourage you. If you've been one of the people that have been battling with uh, the flu or sickness and diseases and stuff like that, there's been a lot of stuff going around, just let us agree with you in prayer that there's a supernatural transfer of God's Word and that what has been spoken in there will come alive on the inside of you today. And that the healing power of God will, will take you further. It will touch you in areas and places of your life. And possibly you want to even stand in the gap for a stand in and proxy of someone else that needs to be touched. And that can mean from the president to the, to the nation down to local electives or down to just someone in your family that really is battling with a sickness or disease a terminal illness or whatever it is. It's commonplace for the church of Jesus Christ to see miracles working through his people when the two of us meet, not that we're any more special than you, but we're just believers coming into agreement on the word of God that's been spoken. And he is the God that heals us. So I just want to open up the floor. If you're in here, no matter what it is, there's been a great word tonight, uh, today that's gone forth. I'll be ministering tonight on prayer, but there's been a great word that's been gone forth today on healing. And I just want to encourage you, please, please, just allow the Holy Spirit to draw you and respond to that. Just praise God. Thank you. Ben, let's just continue to worship God, and then let's just take this moment to start praying and believing for God to do some things and to touch in these areas. Amen? Amen? Altar workers, if you're up, if you're in the audience and you're just feeling like, uh, you, you know, that uh, uh, you need prayer or want to pray for someone else, feel free to start interceding or come up and stand behind them. Feel free to, to help us if you're someone who's able, GTU or someone else. If you'd like to help us pray for people or whatever, feel free. Amen?
We love you and we bless you. If you are going to leave, just please be respectful of the atmosphere because we know God's going to do some things here. We would love to see you back here tonight at 6 o'clock. We keep the services timely, but they're impacted. So uh, thank you again, and we're going to turn it back over to worship and ministry time. We love you and we bless you. We'll see you again soon.